Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on the planet. A mountain so high that even the jet stream hits. Climbers here can be faced with winds beyond 320 km per hour when the weather shifts. Close to 4,500 people have made it to the top of the world and 284 have perished trying. But it is still one of the most coveted prizes of human endurance and exploration. Uh, it was in 1965 that uh, the first Everest expedition of, of our country was led by uh, a naval captain, uh, Captain Nemes Kohli. In uh, 2015, we thought that you know, it was an apt occasion to initiate uh, a case for an expedition to Everest because that was the, uh, you know, to commemorate the golden jubilee of uh, the expedition led by Captain Kohli. Why Everest was the first and foremost question asked of me when we began our quest. The Himalayas have emerged vertically from the sea and the tallest mountain Everest is also known as the Sagar Martha. You see there is a distinct connect and therefore an absolute logic for the Navy men to choose to scale Everest. And what better way than to begin this journey from the seabed to the summit, which was also the theme of this mission, Sagar Tal Se Sagar Mat. The Indian Naval Mountain Cell was formed in 2002, thus creating an institutional mechanism for the extreme adventure sport. The Navy team under Kanambandra Satyabrata Dham was successful in hoisting the tricolor and naval ensign atop Mount Everest in 2004, following it with the South and North Pole expeditions in 2006 and 8, thus making Indian Navy one of the few organizations in the world to have achieved the three-pole challenge. When the plans for the present expedition were being drawn out, Navy had to start almost from scratch by seeking a fresh lot of volunteers. Basically, the draws courses were conducted for a new lot of enthusiasts, which also included few lady officers at some of the most prominent mountain schools in the country. At the same time, a series of eight expeditions were conducted over a period of next two years to peaks ranging from 6,500 meters to 7,700 meters, including Mount Kamet, the highest climbable peak in the country. We thus had a pool of over 100 mountaineers to choose from. A team of 30 mountaineers from these were shortlisted and sent to Army Mountain Institute at Siachen Base Camp for icecraft training in December 2016. And finally, we had a team of 18 climbers and 6 base camp members for the expedition. I was in the coach, and 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 I was in the coach. उस टाइम पे मतलब वो खुशी को मैं बता नहीं सकता वो बहुत अच्छा फील हो रहा था उस टाइम पे। After weeks of consolidated training, the team is now ready to scale up the challenge and prove themselves against the elements of nature. It's the 31st of March, and the Indian Navy expedition team has reached the capital of Nepal, Kathmandu, the gateway to Nepal's Himalayan region and home of Bhagwan Pashupatinath. This is the team's first halt. Team seeks blessings at the Bhagwan Pashupatinath temple and were also welcomed by the Indian embassy in Kathmandu. After completing all the permit formalities, the team is now all set towards its ultimate odyssey, Mount Everest. A 160 kilometers long bus journey from Kathmandu to Jiri through beautiful Himalayan landscapes is the last motorized transport the team will take in the coming few weeks. To add something unique to their expedition, the Indian Navy team will be using the traditional Edmund Hillary route. Starting from Chiri, the route passes through beautiful terraced farmlands, lush green forests and classic Middle Hill countryside. Few of the important stop points being Shivalaya, Jundesi and finally 
Lukla. From here, the team will experience a constant gain in altitude and the landscape will gradually transition from green to barren by the time they reach Everest Base Camp. The team has started their trek from Jiri and this trek would help them adjust to the harsh conditions around Mount Everest, mentally and physically. Very soon, I got the opportunity to climb Everest. That's because of Navy office. Once you start climbing, no, you start making memories. It's not just one memory. There were several. After six days of trek in the beautiful Himalayan valleys of Nepal, the team has now reached Lukla, a town known for world's most dangerous airstrip. Busy all day, ferrying the visitors of Mount Everest. This also marks as the transition point from low altitude to high altitude trekking. Traditionally, prayer flags are used to promote peace. Tibetans believe the mantras will be blown by the wind to spread the prayers and positivity. Along with the Nepali yak herders and porters, more climbers and mountaineers have accompanied the Indian Navy team on the trek to base camp. After Lukla, the next major stop is Namache Bazaar, the highest market in the world and once a capital of Khumbu region. Till now, the weather that accompanied the team on the trek has been highly unpredictable. The magnificent view of the valley has transitioned from lush green to snowy white. Last night, the weather changed drastically, resulting in heavy snowfall in the area. Due to poor weather conditions, team decides to make a halt at the camp. After 17 days of trek from lush green farmland, dense forest and fast flowing rivers to barren land and glacial pools, the team is just a few kilometers away from the base camp. They stop at the Everest Memorial to pay respects to the brave souls, known and unknown, who have died or gone missing while attempting to summit the Everest. At 5,300 meters, the base camp of Mount Everest is already higher than any mountain in the Rockies. For nearly two months, the base camp is home to about 365 mountaineers in 39 teams from all around the world, making it the highest global village on Earth. The human body needs to adjust slowly to rising altitudes and it is a huge effort just to begin the climb. The Indian Navy has already done 17 days of trekking, which has benefited them greatly. However, the team will take another month to fully acclimatize their bodies before they attempt the summit. The South Ridge route goes through an exhausting 2.6 kilometers climb 
through the Khumbu Icefall to Camp 1. In this valley of silence, Camp 2 is at a height of 6,400 meters, just under the wall of the Lhotse face. The steep, hard ice climb from the Lhotse wall leads to Camp 3 at a height of 7,162 meters. The Camp 4 is hanging just below the death zone at a height of 7,900 meters. From Camp 4 to Summit is a night-long race against time and oxygen through this last obstacle, Hillary Step. Within few days, the naval expedition camp became a hub of activities. A naval team of two doctors and three assistants has treated over 300 people at base camp for various ailments. Sharing their experiences and jokes with fellow mountaineers over meals is a great way to pass the time and to forget their fatigue and worries. At base camp, the team is taking careful training of using bottled oxygen for the summit ascent. The oxygen levels at the top of the world are only a third of what they are at sea level. Humans cannot survive for any length of time at an elevation above 26,000 feet, which on Everest is known as the death zone. At this altitude, the human body is unable to adjust to the low oxygen levels and begins to deteriorate. The air is so thin at such altitudes that helicopter evacuation is a dangerous task and out of question after Camp 2. Which means the team members will only have the support of each other in case of any eventuality. No one was clear when the route will open. So in that case, we had to be ever ready that oh, if the route opens today, we have to be ahead. So guys who were really strong climbers or with a lot of technical experience, we made them into team A. So that they could cope up with bad weather and if required, attempt again. And team B would be given the most easiest weather window or wherever the weather plays really safe. So that was primarily in division of the two teams. The team must be very careful of every step taken on the mountain. A small ankle twist can break their dreams for the summit ascent. Snowfall has just started and is pushing the team to descend back to base camp. Before setting higher camps on Mount Everest, a monk accompanied with Sherpas performs puja at base camp, praying for the well-being of Sherpas and all climbers. Sherpas believe that through puja, they ask for permission to set foot on the sacred mountain. After paying respect to the great mountain, the team is ready to march for higher camps. Hanging just above this global village is their first obstacle the Khumbu Icefall, a frozen river full of crevices and shifting ice blocks. The hidden crevices open up with little warning and huge blocks of ice tumble down time to time, making it one of the most dangerous parts of the climb. Seeing that thing in the movie in television and climbing was a little different, you know. Uh, in TV it looks a little bit of easy but climbing there was not that easy. You know, you start from Kumbu Ice Fall, you have all the crevasses opened up. When you see, actually, actually see those crevasses in front of you and those big, big ladders in front of you, you are, you are completely mesmerized. You think, what the hell am I doing here? The teams will subsequently go to higher camps for acclimatization. Mountaineers need to adjust their bodies to such altitudes 
by staying at higher camps for one or two nights. However, staying for long periods at high altitudes and freezing cold temperatures increase the chances of high altitude mountain sickness and cerebral edema to a large extent. Apart from the physical challenges, continuous avalanches and bad weather are the biggest obstacle to the summit. Teams have completed their two weeks high altitude training at base camp and now they need to stay at least for a week at lower altitudes before their final attempt to summit. Summit attempt to Mount Everest is highly dependent on weather conditions. But will the weather cooperate with their mission is still uncertain. Uh, right now we are at uh, uh, Everest Base Camp, 5340 meter height. So tomorrow we should do to uh, do our uh, summit ascent. Today is 17th, so 18.0300 hours. We'll be heading for our summit uh, attempt. It has been a long wait and uh, hopefully if all goes well, we'll see you again on 21st after summer. having summited Everest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope for the best. <laughs> Thank well, take care. Initially, it is completely dark night. You cannot see anything other than the colleagues walking ahead of you or behind you. Uh, just your head towards, you can look into the steps where you have to put your steps. So, and your rope and your safety equipment, that's all. Uh, nothing more than that you can see in that dark, dark night. Before expeditions, if you compare it, then it seems like you have to be a climber. We have both advanced in the basic advance. So it seems like we will do it, we will do it. But the ground reality is something different if we come in Everest. That is so continuous climbing. You can think that we have to climb around 12-14 hours. We have to climb around 70-80 degrees. Continuous climb. Non-stop. Closer, the closest what you can expect from a wall-like situation would be an adventure spot. Where you're at the edge, there's pressure mounting on you, you need to take rapid decision, quick. Life in that situations. You don't get in everyday life. It's the closest you can go in extreme adventure spots. The long trek through Kumbu Icefall is both exciting and physically draining. But the overall poor weather conditions are becoming a cause of concern for Team A. Despite a long hard day, Team A makes it till Camp 2 before nightfall. In case the weather does not clear at higher camps, this extra day will give them a larger window of opportunity to summit. Unlike Team B, which had to stay put at Camp 2 for four bitterly cold nights owing to awful weather. Team A got better weather conditions at Camp 2. 
आगे अभी हम वापस नहीं आने वाले बस अगर वेदर डजन गिव वेदर विंडो कम था इसलिए जो लोग पहले गए थे वो नीचे आ रहे थे अब पाथ भी आपका थोड़ा सा नैरो रहता है अब एक ही रोप वहाँ पे लगी हुई है और नीचे पूरा खाई है 200, 400, 500 मीटर तक पूरा आपको मतलब दिखेगा पूरा पूरा स्नो ही है मतलब एक बार अगर पैर स्लिप हुआ तो डायरेक्ट सीधा कैंप कैंप टू कैंप वन के पास जाओगे आप उस एल्टीट्यूड पे हम ज़्यादा कुछ खा नहीं पाते हैं ओनली सर्वाइवल टाइप का खाना खाते हैं बहुत ही मतलब मिनिमम जस्ट फॉर द नेम सेक टाइप में और पानी भी उधर ओनली आपके पास में एक लीटर है मतलब आप फिजिकली बहुत ज़्यादा स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं बचते हो अदर देन योर मेंटल कि आपको जो फिजिकली जो आपके पास में जो रिजर्व फैट है या जो रिजर्व एनर्जीज है आपके मसल्स में या एक जो मेंटल कॉन्फिडेंस कि मैं मैं वीक नहीं हो सकता हूँ मैं काफ़ी स्ट्रॉन्ग हूँ करके जो लोचे का फेज है इट विल यू नोन एज ए मोर टेक्निकल दैन एवरेज कैम्प थ्री तक हमारा रास्ता सेम है जब हमारा कैम्प फोर सेटअप हो जाएगा वो सेपरेट है एंड एवरेस्ट का सेपरेट है आफ्टर कैम्प थ्री द हायर कैम्प्स टू द पीक्स ऑफ माउंट एवरेस्ट एंड माउंट लोथ से विल सेपरेट एंड द टू मेंबर इंडियन नेवी टीम विल आल्सो अटेम्प्ट माउंट लोथ से द फोर्थ हाईएस्ट पीक इन द वर्ल्ड ऑन द अदर साइड टीम ए हैज आल्सो मार्च टुवर्ड्स कैम्प फोर उसके बाद दूसरे दिन सुबह 4:30 बजे हम कैम्प फोर के लिए निकले कैम्प फोर का 8 टू 9 आवर्स का ट्रैक करने के बाद क्लाइंबिंग करने के बाद हम कैंप फोर में पहुंचे वहाँ पे पहुंचे तो वहाँ पे बहुत बड़ा भयानक दृश्य था जो हमारे टेंट्स थे पूरे टूट चुके थे टेंट रहने के लिए नहीं तो फिर मैं अराउंड 11:30 थर्टी पहुँच गया था ऑलमोस्ट मतलब आधा एक घंटा टीम से पहले पहुँच गया था तो फिर बाहर ही रुकना पड़ा मेरे को मेरे को और शेरपा को तो बहुत ठंडी भी लग रही थी हवा ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी टू फोर्टी फाइव नॉट चल रही थी कैंप फोर पहुँचने के बाद थोड़ा सा मौसम जैसे पहुँचे थे उस समय लग रहा था कि मौसम थोड़ा सा ख़राब है काफ़ी देर इंतज़ार किया था कि मौसम सही रहे या सही हो जाए लेकिन फाइनली हमको समेट मार्च करना पड़ा इन द इवनिंग एट अराउंड वन नाइन थ्री जीरो आवर्स वी स्टार्टेड फॉर समिट मार्च उस दिन मौसम रात को दो बजे ही बहुत ख़राब हो गया था सब उसमें विंड स्टार्ट हो गई थी स्नो भी गिर रहा था टेम्परेचर ऑलमोस्ट माइनस फोर्टी फाइव फिफ्टी था तो आप जो ब्रीथ कर रहे हो ना उसकी जो वेपर्स आते थे उसका भी आइस बन बन रहा था सो थॉट्स आर कमिंग एंड गोइंग आउट एंड गोइंग इन माई माई माइंड बट नॉट दैट थॉट कि यार मुझे टर्न कर लेना है बिकॉज वन ऑफ माई फ्रेंड आई मेड इन द ऑन द वे ही टोल्ड सर मेरा पूरा पैर जाम हो गया है तो अभी मुझे क्या करना है <laughs> तो मैं बोला जस्ट कीप ऑन वॉकिंग अगर तुम रुके तो टर्न हो जाओगे एक घंटे की और बात है जस्ट गिव वन लास्ट पुस फिर आ, मैंने कैसे भी करके क्रॉल करके इवन मैं इतनी एनर्जी भी नहीं रही कि मैं क्रैम्प ऑन भी सेल्फ एंकर भी लगा लूँ पर मैं कैसे भी क्रॉल करके लगा के कैसे भी कर किया सो आप जस्ट दैट वॉज माइंड माइंड जस्ट हैव टू कीप फॉलोइंग हैव टू कीप फॉलो दी फुल स्टेप्स एंड दैट टुक मी टू साउथ समिट एंड साउथ समिट केम दैट एनर्जी केम ऑटोमेटिकली केम माई माइंड ओनली जस्ट वन आर डिस लेफ्ट एंड आई विल बी ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो दैट वॉज अ वेरी वेरी रियली अ ग्रेट मोमेंट फॉर मी एंड जस्ट टू पुश मी टू अप Team B had to constantly face bad weather. 
but they waded through all exhaustion and medical risks to finally reach summit on 27th May. Summit में पहुंचने के बाद ऐसा फील होता है कि मतलब जिस काम के लिए मैं आया था वो काम मेरा complete हो गया है एक अंदरूनी जो खुशी होती है वो मिल जाती है और उसका फायदा नीचे आते समय होता है कि जब मैंने कुछ किया और मेरे को कुछ हासिल हो गया तो नीचे आते समय हम थोड़ा सा फेटिक होने के बावजूद भी स्पीड पकड़ लेते हैं और नीचे आने के लिए वो खुशी हमको मोटिवेट करती है कि चलो नीचे चलना है समिट इज ओनली हाफ द जर्नी एंड द मोर डेंजरस पार्ट इज द डिसेंट फ्रॉम टॉप ओइंग टू फटीक मोस्ट ऑफ द एक्सीडेंट्स हैपन वाइल कमिंग डाउन बट द टीम मेक्स इट सेफली एट द बेस कैंप finally completing their mission i was privileged to lead such a wonderful team of enthusiastic men full of vigor and professional expertise in fact the senior mountaineers of the navy were involved in the mission right from the conceptual stage through the planning and coordination which allowed me to easily chart the way for this daring and adventurous mission through collective wisdom and efforts of the team of course an expedition of this scale required the institutional backing of funds manpower logistics etc and the navy left no stone unturned in providing us with the requisite support such are the ways of the mountains that at every stage the task got more daunting and we felt more relieved and humble of having accomplished the same it was an experience of an altogether different kind which took us to a spiritual high no mountaineer ever goes there to create any records in fact the journey to the top is meant to see the world and not for the world to see nonetheless indian navy did have the distinction of having the highest number of summitiers from amongst the 39 teams which participated in the 2017 spring season for the Everest I'm actually proud of the fact that most of these men came from coastal areas and the northern southern plains of India got acclimatized to the harsh environs there and scaled the summit through sheer will power reaching the Everest summit symbolizes the victory of the human spirit over the challenges posed by nature and the journey represents the core values of grit and determination courage and valor commitment and camaraderie which are intrinsic to the navy jai hind shano varun